When you hear the phrase change your life, kind of conjures up images of Rocky doing the motivational montage where he's in a hoodie, running up the stairs, pounding the raw egg smoothie, and transforming himself through sheer tenacity, willpower, and intensity. I said enough, and I turned everything around overnight. It's very extreme, and I think that that can be a good approach for some people, but when you look at the numbers, how 80% of people starting New Year's resolutions are off by the second week of February, because they're going from that intensity camp. What's better is sustainability. And if you want to change your life in some way, big or small, look no further than implementing some small habits into your daily routines. Here's five of my personal favorites. Think of your brain like a giant computer that has RAM or operating power. If I have my computer right here and it has like 20 tabs open or five applications running in the background, the whole thing slows down, doesn't it? Even though we're not using them, they're still there. Your brain works the same way. All these tasks on your to-do list and do it later and oh, I have to reply to that person and wait, did I send that message back? Did I pay that bill? That's tabs in the background eating up so much of your headspace. This habit really helped me and I know it'll help you as well. It's called one touching. Very simple. If a task takes less than two minutes for you to do, do it now. The dirty dish that you could wash real quick, do it now. Replying to someone real quick, do it now. Taking out the trash, paying bills, putting something on your calendar, one touching. One touching has a cool benefit that you're only doing something once. And most of us do things two, three, four times. Getting an email, opening it and reading it, marking it as unread, opening it again, replying, that's like five different touches on one task that if you just opened it and replied, that's one. You'll be amazed at how much more energy and time you actually get back just doing things once instead of five different times. You ever have moments in your day where you feel lethargic, tired, and it doesn't matter how much sleep you got, six, seven, eight hours, you're eating right, but you're still just like tired, maybe you have brain fog, coffee doesn't hit the same. This next point will definitely help. And it's very easy, it's free, it's something you can do anytime, anywhere. I was listening to a podcast the other day by Dr. Andrew Huberman. He was talking about a pattern of breathing that kids do when they're crying and they're trying to calm themselves down. Dogs will do this when they're in deep sleep. It's sort of a breathing cadence. Double inhales followed by an exhale. It looks something like... So you breathe in, you sneak a little more air in at the top, and then release. When they study this in his lab, he says that just two, three of those breaths makes people more alert and decreases their stress level. They're more present. Also says it offloads CO2 rapidly. That double inhale is flooding your system with oxygen. It makes you more alert. A snap out of the brain fog, baby. Maybe you have a phone call or a Zoom meeting you're dreading. Just take a few deep breaths. <sighs> Watch yourself start to calm down a bit be more engaged and perform better. You can also use breath work as a form of meditation. In fact, we have a few start to finish guides on this channel, I'll link down below. People seem to like them. Some of these have millions of views, which is pretty cool. And in that way, you can get high on your own supply. Last year, my dad and I took a road trip and we didn't just wanna use a normal car. I was like, dad, I've never been in a Tesla, I've never driven one. Let's see what these electric things are all about. I hear they got some get up and go. So we did, we rented a Tesla, great experience, awesome. One thing I didn't expect, it's called range anxiety. You ever heard that term? On the dashboard, there's a giant display and the battery life of your car, how much you have before you need to find a charge station. As it gets to like 40, 30%, 20%, 10%, you start to kind of like, we gotta find somewhere to charge it fast. Cause you don't want to run out. You don't want to be stranded. I think we all have sort of a range anxiety in our brains and our emotions and ourself. Whether it shows up as anxiety or you hear terms like I burnt out, I was exhausted, it was draining. Pay attention to the language. One thing that I really find contributes to the draining of your mental battery throughout the day is overstimulation. You know how crazy it is that we live in a world where you can go on your phone for an hour and see minimum 60 pieces of different content and different styles, people telling you what to do, and you're just scrolling. The hypnotic trance-like state it pulls us in. There's a great quote that's always stuck with me. All of humanity's problems stems from man's inability to sit alone in a room quietly. 
And just like that Tesla battery, eventually you need to pull over and recharge. And even on our off days where we're like, we're trying to recharge or vacation, people are still just plugged in, just so stimulated. No judgment here. It's something we all can get better at. But what I've found here for this next habit that's really helped me, I call it boredom hours. Intentionally being bored. We think of boredom as a negative thing. Like, oh, I'm so bored, it's so negative. But flipping the vibe of boredom to actually being a recharge and a positive. Trying to not cram every dull hour of the day with just another piece of entertainment content stimulation. I found a lot of peace from it. I believe that anxiety is moving very fast and frantically. It's your mind racing a mile a minute. People wonder why they have a new sense of anxiety. And it's like, literally your screen time says six hours of TikTok. You're slamming 800 milligrams of caffeine. You barely sleep. And every single moment of the day, you don't even take a breather. You're eating a meal, watching like 20 different TikToks, push notifications from every single app. Even when you watch Netflix, you have something on your phone pulled up at the same time. Let's be real. Boredom hours give you a time to spend with you. And I think that a lot of people are just consuming other people's thoughts all day and they wonder why they feel lost or maybe like they don't know themselves or they don't love themselves. And I think it's deeper than just, oh, I'm overstimulated with TikToks or short content, but it's that you don't spend any time with yourself alone. You're always with someone else virtually right? Even if you're alone, you're spending time with other people in a one-way conversation where you're the observer. These boredom hours take time for you. And that might be uncomfortable at first. That might feel awkward, but there's a get to know yourself type of process that has to occur for you to be comfortable. Being more bored, try it out. You're probably aware that if you take two groups, one with goals and one without, the group that sets goals in general gets more stuff done. Chances are, if you're watching this, you probably do that already. There's a major flaw with how most people set goals. And if you make this mistake, goals can have a tendency to work against you and demotivate you instead of what they're supposed to be for motivating. The problem with how most people set goals is that it's all or nothing. It's either 100% you hit it or it's 0% you didn't. And also the process of moving towards your goal, you're just always not there, not there, not there. This habit is on chunking. And this is a much better thing to incorporate with your goals. Instead of the target being far away and you moving towards it, you set mini targets along the way. When you think about losing 20 pounds, it's not that you lose 20 pounds overnight. You'll lose five, then 10, then 15, eventually 20. In the case of a YouTube channel, when I was building this, I didn't just say I wanted to hit 100,000 subscribers. I literally drew it out on a chart. Okay, when I hit 1,000, and then five, and then 10, 25, 75. So all along the way, I got things to check off and it made it fun and exciting. Felt like I was leveling up, progressing. How can you take your big thing that you want and chunk it down into like three, four smaller goals that if done correctly, will stair step you towards your big one. Because if things seem too far away, you're gonna procrastinate way more. 10 out of 10 would recommend chunking down your big tasks into a few more manageable small ones. You ever heard that famous phrase that I believe came out on a TED talk? Sitting is the new smoke. Every time I see the numbers, it literally makes me wanna stand up out of my seat. In 2019, the Mayo Clinic did a study. They found that people who sit for more than eight hours a day with no physical activity have the same risk of death and disease as people who smoke and are obese. So for our next habit, so that you don't die, movement. Move it or lose it, baby. Now, movement doesn't have to be some massive hour and a half long bodybuilding workout where you go into the gym and you blast hard style lifting, max deadlifts. Incorporating just a few minutes of activity throughout the day can have huge benefits in your physical health, but also your mental and emotional well-being. One of the habits that I've done and kept up for a long time is taking a long walk on my green belt. I live on a golf course here. We've got some beautiful ones in Arizona. I'll take an audio book and I'll just walk up and down the green belts and get your 10,000 steps in. Another way I incorporated movement is getting a standing desk. You don't have to stand all day, but even just a couple hours. I also got a mini trampoline. I've always wanted one. I think it was like way too much money. I think it was 1200 bucks, but I got the best mini trampoline money could buy. If you have neighbors, they will probably hate you for it. 10 minutes on that thing gets the blood flowing and you feel on fire. Working out for the sake of energy and mental clarity 
has been really useful. And getting up and moving, I have found a massive increase in my mood, my mental clarity, and just my energy throughout the day. Definitely worth not skipping this habit and do with it what you will.